Right, I am now calling this meeting to order. Um, this is the June meeting of the AMSA Board of Trustees, and it is a special annual meeting because we will be doing um, officer elections. We have um, Allison Cohen who's participating remotely due to an emergency. Allison, can you confirm that you can hear us? Yes, I can hear you. All right, and we can hear you clearly as well. What this does mean is that all of our votes will have to be roll call votes. Just so people are aware, okay. Um, The, just to review the agenda today, we actually have a very full agenda, but we have a short executive session, so that's good. <laughs> so it will be an open session longer than uh, we have been the last couple of months. Um, this will be our faculty rep's last meeting, so she's asked for longer than five minutes for comments. Um, we will ask have our parent update. In the ED report, we are gonna be talking both about the recent faculty survey that was sent out, actually it's a staff survey, because it was faculty and staff. Um, a little bit more discussion on family survey results, you all received the open response questions that Rick graciously redacted, and also an update on the special education department. In chair business, we're doing trustee elections, we're going to be electing, re-electing our parent rep, re-electing our new faculty rep. Um, a brief discussion on committee assignments, this is our annual, um, distribution of tasks for all trustees, so we're going to be looking at all our committees and task forces. We get to vote on our collective bargaining contract that our collective bargaining team graciously spent many, many hours negotiating. Um, and then we'll have updates from various task forces. And then within gov uh, governance, we're going to be talking about officer elections, because all officers are up for renewal. Um, discuss a proposed EB evaluation process. And then we'll have a longer discussion on the Education Committee re report and recommendations that were started last month. Um, we will take a good chunk of time. Um, we've devoted 30 minutes. We'll see how the discussion goes. A copy of last month's report is in your board packets as well. So are there any uh, questions or changes or additions to the agenda? Okay, if not, um, Let's look at the minutes. I don't see Sarah. Who's taking minutes tonight? <coughs> Any questions on the minutes? I just I didn't see Sarah. Who's I know Sarah's minutes? not here today, so Allison and I are going. So. You okay? Make a note that the meeting is being videotaped. Ken made a motion. Second. Chris would second. We have to do this as a roll call vote, so Mark. Yes. Stop. Yes. 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 Allison? Yeah. Okay. I abstain. Oh, Brian was not here. Okay. I vote yes. 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 Okay, thank you. The minutes are approved. All right, public comment. Ooh, we've got our fancy update to the podium. Yeah. Okay, we have two people signed up for public comment. Ms. Lisa Anderson.
but didn't have the rules and limitations other non-charter public school environments faced. However, four years ago, everything changed. AMSA with, was in its seventh year of existence. Still a young school by many standards, but still old enough to know better. What I did not add earlier, as I introduced myself, is that in addition to being a wife and a mother, I'm also a human, um, human resources professional with over 15 years of experience working with companies big and small, from a well-established local early childhood education company, a large international boot and clothing retailer, Progressive Biotech, and a very successful retail company that is a household name. I have experience creating and implementing employment policies, employee engagement programs, handling a wide range of employee relations issues, the oversight of performance management programs, and performance improvement plans. If I had been the HR professional on this team, I can wholeheartedly say I would put the board and the past and present administrators on a performance improvement plan long ago. If I don't have to do my, if I don't do my job, I get fired. You shouldn't be any different. While I can speak to many concerns, I realize my time is limited. Therefore, my largest concern is regarding teacher retention and morale. Four years ago, I wasn't a parent of the NAMSA student, but as a mother, I can empathize with the massive changes that are that were afoot. As an HR professional, I was in awe of the choices being made in the three years under John Procago's reign. In the early, early years of his appointment at AMSA, there was a hope that possibly, perhaps, this was the change the school needed. An experienced administrator. He was up front, told you how he felt, and you knew where you stood with him. Moved into, move into the end of the year two, and it started to move downhill to the point that teachers started to question decisions being made by the ED, Mr. Bricado, and the principal, Mr. Sweeney. It was at that time that teachers started to experience bullying behaviors that were demeaning and demoralizing and left them feeling fearful for their jobs. I was fearful for my husband's profession and our family's life, livelihood. This past year, under Dr. McCleary, Mr. Kirk, Dr. Curry, and Ms. O'Connor, has been no better. This environment is a cancer that is spreading and needs to be treated now. Teachers are pouring their hearts and souls into the education of our children. In return, they are facing barriers with union negotiations, a revolving door of administrators, massive lack of respect and professional courtesy, and demeaning and oppressive leadership. Data reports reported and shared on the DOE website supports the pattern as well. 2013, our retention rate of teachers was reported at 81.9%. Last year was 83.3, the lowest of the four core towns their average retention was 91.25. Our retention rates are also below the state average of 88.5. Even if you look at the five-year average, answer retention rates are far fall below the core town's average as well as the state average. If we are to be a school of choice, then teacher retention is paramount to this success. Move forward to the summer of 2015 and to this year, and we are still facing massive attrition. Last year, we reportedly hit around 25%. However, when I questioned Dr. McCleary from our information, I was stonewalled. However, it is reported that he believes attrition happens. Yes, it does, but not at the rate or the fashion in which we have seen. This feels more like a cleanse than normal and natural attrition. Attrition is normal and healthy, but only to a certain degree. There are any number of studies that can speak to that fact. Current data is no better. Here we are in the first week of summer, and we are already at 15% and climbing. It is time to stop the bleeding and right this ship. In this year, with our fifth ED, we are no nearer to that goal than we were two years ago. Under the current administration, we started and ended the school year with uniform cake. We wasted countless time on that. We have faced deceit, a reduction of services to special education students, an extreme lack of communication, a decrease in adherence to and regard for safety rules and regulations, cover-ups, of school-related incidents, an increase in student misconduct, and bullying and continued attrition issues, not just in teachers, but also with students, which is a new and troublesome trend. You can have the brightest students and even the modest of administrators, but without highly skilled, motivated, and dedicated teachers who feel heard, valued, and respected, we cannot be successful. I think the empirical and anecdotal evidence is overwhelmingly clear. We are a sinking ship. Without swift, clear action and immediate development of a cross-functional task force to fix these issues, 
we will cease to exist. All options for teacher ret retention need to be explored. We, what we have right now, is not working. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Roger Jarrett. Official final faculty report to the board. Um, I did ask for a little bit more than my allotted five minutes, and I thank you, Pauline, for giving me that. I'm going to start by um, sharing um, some something from a teacher who is not me, um, as I've always tried, some days better than others, I'm sure, to try and represent voices other than my own. I have not always been successful of that, but I'm going to try to do that today. Um, we, this is um, some, some, I posed a question yeah, to- Yeah, can I ask you just to speak a little bit louder? I'm sorry, because I want to be able to hear what you're saying. Is this better, Allison? Can you hear me now? Speak a little bit louder, because I want to hear what you're saying. Yeah, I'll try my best, Allison. Louder, Thank you. Yeah. Um, so I posed a question to staff members. What can I bring to the board? What can the board do at tonight's meeting to help you feel confident in the board, to help you have trust in what the board is doing? And these are um, this person's suggestions. Um, I don't happen to agree with all of them, but I'm sharing them with you because I think they're a valid window into what many staff members are feeling. And, um, and so I think it's important that you hear them. So um, here we go. Um, what can the board do? Um, they can acknowledge their part in the negative culture and environment that has evolved over the past several years at AMSA. Yes, even though many of them are newer members. They can apologize to staff who have left over the years for any wrongs those people may still feel in regards to how they were treated. They can express their disappointment, frustration, and pain in being part of an organization that is best known for the one successful performance of its students in multiple venues, states, and nationwide over the past years, and the mismanagement and mistreatment of its teachers and staff in countless ways over the same period. Um, they can express their desire to turn things around and willingness to be held accountable for the speed of that turnaround. They can acknowledge that the current system has not been working in the best interests of the students or staff and that there needs to be changes to the fundamental way AMSA is managed. They can publicize the results of the staff survey to all teachers and families verbatim. They can act on the results of the survey publicly as appropriate and swiftly. They can admit that a single teacher representative on the board of trustees has been a poor way for them to gain an accurate and timely view of how teachers feel about their employment and treatment at the school. There needs to be better teacher representation to or on the board, and that they are willing to be um, and they are willing to publicly explore any of these options. Um, for example, more teacher representation and power within the structure of the school. Uh, they can admit that relying on the executive director to give them a realistic and timely view of what's happening at the school has proven to be inadequate, and. Ha as have been yearly surveys of the staff. There need to be other ways the board can get a finger on the pulse of AMSA, so to speak. They can show that they are willing to publicly explore these options. Oh, they 
can publicly show. Uh, they can vocalize their desire to make AMSA a school other teachers will be tempted to leave their places of employment and come to, rather than the opposite. This would require them to finally take a stand behind the teachers who have faithfully defended the AMSA wall, recognize the importance of the profession, and show their willingness to do what it takes to keep teachers at the school. Yes, this means renegotiating the current deal. Express their willingness to commit to communication, communicating with AMSA alumni, building more of a community that celebrates past students and welcomes them back to participate in community building activities. And uh, the person concludes by saying, I recognize that many of these don't technically fall within what the board generally does. The past five years show me that it's time to change what the board generally does because they have been part of the problem intentionally or not. So um, I'm going to move on from that, and I'm going to say a little bit about the role of the faculty rep. Um, this is the end of my tenure. I've served two one-year terms. And right before I came into this position, the bylaws were changed so that the faculty rep could be limited to serving two one-year terms. I'm saying this for anybody who might not know. Uh, the faculty rep used to be able to serve three one-year terms. Um, and I believe that's the same with the parent rep. We've tried to keep, the board has tried to keep these roles fairly parallel. Um, I believe that the move to change it, to limit it to two years when it was first moved was viewed with suspicion among the faculty. What? They don't, they don't want our person to be on the board. At the time I was that person, so I was flattered. I don't think I would win an election if it happened today. And I think that it's really smart that we're going to, two, to limiting to two year terms. This role, the faculty rep role, can only work if this person brings an outsider perspective. Um, it can only work if you, the board, are, if, if I'm free to come in and say, here's what you're not hearing. But as I've worked with you for two years, I have come to a place where I want to work with you and not against you. I don't want to be an outsider. I'm not an outsider anymore. I'm one of the insiders I've been working with you. I have access to meetings with Dr. McCleary that the vast majority of faculty members don't have. And I automatically, therefore, have a different perspective. Um, and I, I think it's important to realize that it's very healthy that I am leaving um, and that um, I, I don't think that that needs to be a judgment in any way on me or the job that I've done. Um, as a matter of fact, recently one of my colleagues suggested that I, I should be ashamed of how I have represented the faculty. And um, I'm, I'm sorry that they feel that way. I, I'm not ashamed of the job I've done. I've been through two very difficult years and I've tried to do the best I can and I know that I haven't always done the best job. Um, and so um, I just encourage the board to kind of recognize that role as, uh, th this role as a difficult one, that sometimes it's my job to be a gadfly. Not my job, but it will be Tom's job next. Um, <laughs> sorry, Tom. Um, and so um, that's an important role. The faculty needs to feel like you are willing to listen to the nasty stuff. Um, and. So I'm just asking you to keep that in mind. And I'm asking the faculty to keep in mind that this role changes your perspective by its very nature. Um, and I, I have come to sort of appreciate that change. Um, with that, I am going to offer my thoughts on this end of the school year and, um, and what I, where I am. Um, so here's my last faculty rep, rep to the board. Um, next month you'll be welcoming Tom, and I'm very confident that he will be an excellent representative of the faculty. I wish I had a more positive report to give at this time, but as you know, at least 10 faculty members will not be returning to, next, to AMSA next fall. This does not include the fairly long list of people who left during the school year. All of the people are leaving for different reasons, but all of them are choosing to leave. Not a single person has been terminated or asked not to return. I would like to publicly thank these teachers for their years of service to AMSA and to its students. Um, Lauren Galliardi, David Alano, Kelly Antonuccio, Melissa Gray, Rhiannon Myers, Andrew Kudo, Katie Jenkin, Corey Pasternak, Irina Russell, who is 
I think the only person on that list who's been here longer than I have, she retired. I wish her the best of health. I think that is uh, AMSA's first official retirement. Um, and Sheila Warner is also leaving, who is not a teacher, but has supported AMSA teachers superbly. My big fear is that this list will continue to grow. It has been a difficult year for many people at AMSA this year, and I think it's time for us to face a very difficult truth. This is not a nice place to work. And I think we need to ask ourselves some really honest questions about why this is true. A workplace climate should have a tone that is set by the administration and the board. But we are all responsible for helping to create the climate we want to experience. And many people in the community have been willing to look to administration and the board to fix the climate issues, but have been unwilling to question their own behavior. This is an all hands on deck kind of moment. I think it's really important to recognize that it's not just the many teachers who have had a really sour year. Many parents have, bad, have had bad experiences this year. Several department chairs have had rough years. And our administrators in their first year here have faced a baptism by fire. I have heard horror stories and I have witnessed with my own eyes people not being treated well. I've heard of people being called ugly names and treated rudely, people who overheard cruel things said about them based on their physical appearance or about how they dress, how much they eat. I have seen, and I am not necessarily talking about teachers, and here's where I'm probably going to be, I'm going to, I'm going to say some things that aren't going to make a lot of people happy, but this is my last moment. I have seen administrators victim to this community as much, if not more so, than teachers and parents, and I think we need to acknowledge that. I have seen administrators openly mocked at faculty meetings. I have, in front of the entire faculty, I have seen administrators pilloried on social media with self-serving half-truths offered as justification. I have seen people complain about the number of administrations teachers or students have had to adjust to, and then in the next breath suggest that the administration needs to go. These things happen to people who are new to our community, people who should have been welcomed, and under these circumstances, I don't know why any administrator why any teacher or why any parent would stay. It is ugly. And I want to say this really seriously. We need to look at what we can do to fix this. Maybe you think you would be happier if Dr. McCleary or Dr. Curry or Ms. O'Connor did leave. Maybe you think that's why we made, maybe that's why we made it unwelcoming in the first place. But I don't blame anyone who chooses to leave. People need to make the right decisions for their families. But where will AMSA be if people continue to leave? We cannot start fresh every autumn. We have to ask ourselves where we want to be in five years. I don't know if you have ever thought of me as a person with integrity, wisdom, or honesty, but I hope so. I hope that's how I got elected in the first place. But if you have ever valued my opinion, I'm asking you to give some weight to what I am saying. There are very few great school administrators out there. And I have met with Dr. McCleary many times, and I think that he is the real deal. I think that we are conditioned to think of people who react quickly as decisive leaders, and he is not a quick actor. We tend to associate quiet with weakness, and I don't think that, McCle I think that Dr. McCleary's slowness to anger is his strength. Every decision that he has made has been greeted with loud, angry, public criticism. And if he leaves, I wouldn't blame him. I think not only do we not need to be in a position where we're asking him to leave, we need to be praying every night that he doesn't decide to leave us. Because we have made this a miserable place for him to come to work. And if he leaves as an institution, we will not be better off. In my two years on the board, I have worked on hiring two executive directors. It's an exhausting task. If you have seen the pile of resumes that come in, there are not a lot of great leaders out there. There's not some magical forest growing brilliant executive directors and we can just go and have our pick. Google us. Would you come and work here? I teach government, and so forgive me for dropping a little government lesson in here. We don't live in a democracy. 
Madison and the founders actually feared democracy because human nature is volatile and we get, ups at, we get upset at stuff. We react. Our government is designed to insulate policy creation from this volatility. Our legislative process is intentionally long and full of hurdles. Our president is elected to a four-year term. Our senators are elected to six-year terms, and our representatives in the House are elected to two-year terms. The offices that are short terms are designed to be re uh, responsible to the people. You're supposed to be able to call your House representative. And, and I'm a short term. I'm supposed to be able to react to you. But senators and presidents have longer terms because the founders wanted to recognize that they need a little bit of space and time to implement decisions that may not be popular, but need some time to, to work themselves out. We have impeachment for officials who violate the law, but history teaches us that it should, it's not to be used for abuse, it's not to be used for political reasons. The board hired Dr. McCleary to a three-year contract. That was a wise decision. Dr. McCleary has shown himself to be a patient man, to make slow but deliberate decisions, to observe before reacting, and to persuade people rather to, than to force them. As a school, we need to give him the time and the space to realize his vision, and we need to hope, beyond what is actually reasonable, that he does not give up on us. Dr. McCleary and Dr. Curry and Ms. O'Connor are really smart people. They have a lot of experience and they know what they are doing. They have taken a year to learn about AMSA and the specific elements that make us special and unique to the special challenges we face, and I don't know why we are working so hard as a community to impeach them. This administrative team came into a difficult situation at best. They have tried to bring order and a long-term vision while maintaining and reviving AMSA's commitment to academic excellence. Of all the executive directors I have worked under, none have been as committed to the original founding mission of the School of Academic Excellence for its students, and none have been as capable of making that vision happen. Have they made mistakes? Yes! Can they do better? Holy mackerel, yes! But critically, they have made good faith efforts to listen to concerns and address these mistakes. I believe that they can get, get better, and I believe that, yes, they can address our concerns. There's really good news out there. The teachers and the board have come to an agreement on a contract, which is fair. It is a clear tool for evaluating teachers, which is the first time in 10 years that we've had this. It has salaries that, and a, a better compensation package, and it's a sign of how far we have come. One of the reasons I love teaching AMSA and the reason education hasn't suffered during the many years of turmoil we've faced is that we have a bedrock of celebrating knowledge and expecting to learn. When a teacher at this school assigns work that is difficult and challenging, students and parents recognize this, and although they might be a little bit grumbly about the seven-page paper I assigned them, they support teaching decisions and they expect rigor, they expect it's not going to be easy. I'm not talking about things that are unacceptable, like unethical and illegal behaviors. This is not the norm with our leaders. We have created a climate here at AMSA where we support teachers, but we don't support our leaders. We don't accept their decisions. When we hear of things we don't agree with, our first reaction is to complain loudly and publicly, and sometimes in a very nasty way. And we have made it virtually impossible for someone to come in and lead us. More than any of the things people have asked for in the past year, communication, uniform, staffing, what AMSA needs is two things. Stability is the first. We need to let our leaders lead. We need to support them, especially publicly, complain in, and we need to see what the results are, and then we can tweak it. We must support our leaders just as, we, just as parents and teachers support as parents and students support teachers, we must support our leaders. If we disagree with decisions that they made, which of course you're allowed to do, we have to find a civil and productive way to address these concerns. The second thing we need is kindness. We must stop being awful to each other. If you would disagree with a policy, disagree politely. Explain rationally why you think something else would be a better option. The administration may not change its mind, but I guarantee you they are listening and they do take it into account. Here's where I'm getting at. I'm sorry I'm rambling. It is not in our best interest to continue this way. We are not looking at removing just one person. We are looking at damaging our school. If we cannot fix stability and kindness, there will be no more AMSA. I cannot get paid a salary, good or bad, from a school that does not exist. 
Please, let us make decisions for the future based on these two things, stability and kindness. I am prepared to report that hashtag I am staying, and I will do all that I can to make this school a great place to learn and work. And I hope that everyone, board members, parents, and teachers will join me in that pledge. definitely like to say on behalf of the board that we are very aware of the difficult situation that you have been in. You've been an exceptional faculty rep. Um, I don't think you have uh, skirted the lines in, in I mean, you've definitely been the gadfly. You've been, you've spoken up. You have represented multiple points of view. Um, we know when you first came on board and you said things that no one wanted to hear that there was a outcry over that. And, um, I would certainly like to just publicly thank you for the role that you have played and for um, your honesty and for raising issues that other people have not wanted to raise. Would anyone else like to make any other comments? I'm, I'm sort of speaking on behalf of everybody, but. What she said. <laughs> yeah, but Did thank I? you. I, I, your position has not been an easy one to be in. Good luck, Tom. And, and uh, Jess, I could go on and on, <laughs> honestly, but I echo the sentiments, and I, I'm really glad you were on, on board. You brought a lot of perspective, and you've always been fair. So thank you. Thank you. We're going to miss you. <laughs> I would like to say the same. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking forward to getting back to my Thursday night trivia team. <laughs> you can always come. I can always come, yeah. I'll exactly. <laughs> um, thank you very much for your comments. Liz? Um, okay, so for the um, parent representative, fortunately I was able to, to reach out as school was ending and people um, haven't forgotten that we were meeting tonight, so I did get um, a number of responses. Um, actually, just to echo what um, Jessica was talking about and what Lisa mentioned earlier, teacher turnover continues to be a great concern. And I heard from more than 20 parents. And not just teacher turnover, but the quality of the teachers leaving. And just to put it into perspective, I did take Rick's redacted comments and sort of broke them down into four categories. Um, and what I came up with is is 41% of the comments about the characteristic of your child's school in terms of his or her learning, 41% was teacher related um, directly. 33% um, was culture, 24% was curriculum, and a lot of the curriculum columns could have gone either way, either curriculum or teacher based. So. I don't, I don't think it should be lost on any of us that the turnover issue is a problem that we need to get in front of quickly. So that is one thing that I did want to address. The other thing I would say I've heard from um, five to ten people around, and I want to confirm, I don't know if this is true or not, but there's been um, information floating around that the school's been operating with one nurse and there is concern around that and the legality of that. And I do not know if that is true or not. So um, I'm just asking that question. Um, uh, another comment that I just received um, tonight that um, I think would be interested, to, I'd be interested to understand this, is around the accountability plan. And I know that we report out on that um, once a year, but I'm wondering if there are pieces of it that can be reported out periodically throughout the year so we don't lose sight of it because it is such an important document. Um, and that that's just one question and it doesn't necessarily have to be via a board meeting, it could be via the newsletter so that people are getting information around the accountability plan. Um, and then another comment I did receive this evening was just around the copies. Um, with the executive director and whether they're with the executive director or another administration rep, but just it would be nice to see some results that are coming from those copies. 
um, versus just being a conversation. Um, make sure that there is more two-way communication happening and action taking place. And that is my update for tonight. Thank you. Um, we turn now to the executive director report. So the first thing uh, I have to report on are the faculty staff survey results, which uh, uh, came in uh, recently. I had met with uh, faculty rep, Ms. Bowen, to uh, go over the questions, and um, we, uh, we selected a fairly large number of questions, somewhere on the order of 70 or so. And uh, the questions um, involved um, questions that were asked previously last spring, and so the idea was to make a, a sort of comparison to see where things are headed. So the different uh, categories, as you can see, uh, morale, faculty growth mindset, school climate, staff leadership, relation, teacher family relation, and teaching efficacy. Uh, uh, I think that if you go further, and testing, uh, if you go further down, you can see where the individual questions were going, in which directions. So, for example, for AMPS and morale, if you look at uh, the responses and then you see on the right-hand side there, uh, the green arrow means that the change was positive in an upward direction from last year. If it's a, a smaller number upward, it, uh, it isn't in green, it's in a grayish color. And so you can kind of at a glance tell where things are headed uh, with these questions. And then if you go down, um, so all those are going upward, although some by smaller amounts than others. This, this section is about, uh, let me see, where's the heading for that one? Is that still the morale? Okay, so morale, again, uh, for example, management treats employees with fairness, respect, and dignity. Uh, how much does that change? So that's headed upward. Termination processes are fair and effective. That's headed upward substantially. Uh, how much has it changed? There are two parts to those questions. How much has it changed and where is it uh, headed? So could I ask a question about that, that very thing? Yeah. It was a little confusing to me because I, I noticed, as Dr. McCleary is saying, that each question came in two parts. And so uh, in, and they were paired. And so, you know, for example, um, I enjoy being part of this organization. If you go up just a little bit, um, I enjoy, no, the other way, yeah. I'm sorry, where the 12 is, okay. I enjoy being part of this organization. How much do you agree with this statement, with that statement? So 61% responded favorably, and so that's down 12, okay. Then it says, I enjoy being part of this organization. How much has this changed over the past 12 months? 24% responded favorably, and that is an uptick of 21. I, I, I just don't get the logic behind that at all. How could you enjoy being part of the organization, how much do you agree, and in general at 61? So I guess the implication is, is that 61% say yes, I enjoy it. Only 24% said that it increased over the past 12 months. Is that the way yep. you're looking at it? I think that's okay. the right way to interpret it. And so how does that 12 and 21 factor into that? The up 12, or down 12, up 21. Is that, is that a number of responses or? So Ken, you're saying that, that 12, I don't know, are these percents or raw? So it's down, it's down 12 percent from from last year at the same time. Down, down 12. So we can assume that in spring no. of 20. You're, you're down 12 what? 12 percent. No, um, it's not on 12 percent. Is that 12 percent? Yeah. yeah. I well, thought it I was. Think, yeah, they're comparing what it was 
last spring. So presumably last spring, it was uh, what seventy three. That's what I was just going to say. And so it went down. And the other one was three percent. Yes, that's right. Um, well, so I'm not trying. I'm, I'm not trying to derail the conversation here. I'm just saying it's it's confusing to me how to interpret these this pairing. Yeah, I, I think that was one of the questions that was asked more often than not. It, some of the questions, there are not too many of them, but some of them have that pairing where it talks about uh, how much has changed and then do you agree with it? Yeah, you know, yes, no, I agree a great deal or a little bit or whatever. So maybe that's a, those particular questions that are those pairs would be something we could explore. Well, the reason why I think this is important is because if you go down yeah, if you, if you look at several of them, the tools and technology we use to help me get my job done, how much do you agree with this? 72% responded favorably, okay? That's down nine. Right. And yet, 14% have said it's gone, uh, th that it's improved over the last 12 months, which just seems to, if it's gone down nine, how can it improve by 14%? Well, 14%? I think, Ken, that the people who took the survey in spring of 2015 is not the same group that took it. So it's possible that the it's changed from 2015, then a different group is ch taking it now. Yeah, well, even aside from that, right, so, um, no, so it's so perfect, I suppose. Um, so 72%, that's down 9% from spring, okay. Now, I, the same group is asked, has it improved? 14% of it, of those people perceived though, it's improved. Does That's not what it says, it says changed. Yeah. Has it changed? It doesn't say improved. Yeah. Oh, it actually right. hasn't, yeah. Oh, that, that, so if you took changed as negative, then that would be, yeah. Could oh, be. yeah. But actually, I think if you look at the underlying questions, because I had a quick chance to look at it right before this, um, I think though, responded favorably is, it changed in a positive way. So 14% were believed over the last 12 months it's improved, okay? That, that's where I also think the wording is very confusing for me. Like if you go to the question, I am challenged in my role. How much has it changed over the past 12 months? It almost, the question is really asking to me for some type of a finite response. How much has it changed? But our responses are not in accordance with that question. So it, I had difficulty in interpreting some of the data also. Yeah, I, I would suggest you may want to look at the underlying data. This is a summary mm -hmm. view of it. Um, I, I had the first chance to look at it today. If you look at the underlying questions, mm -hmm. they break down into five questions. Mm -hmm. Here, this is the, the that 14% is a, a summary of the favorable. This is 14% viewed it favorably, but some viewed it negatively, et cetera. So it could vary. When, I think when, you really have to look at the deep for When data. will those results, that breakdown, be available? I don't think there's any reason they, they can't post it on the web, right? So it's already, it's yeah. already out? No, I yeah. think the issue was we're trying to get the Likert scales. Yeah, the Likert scales, around. that's right. Oh, that's yeah, what I sent have, you today. We don't have that summary. Oh, they didn't get No, I did. Yeah, yeah, I sent it to you today. Uh, so I think they're, but they are available as of now. Yeah. 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 So I think it's just a matter of putting the, the link up. But we have confirmed that the second column is percentages, it is not number of responses. I'm not sure we have a fact. I think we'll have to, yeah. we'll have to look. No, the second column meaning the ones in color? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. 21, 9, 3, is that, is that yeah, percentage? That's percentage. percentage. That's percentage. percentage. Yeah. Not number of responses. No. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think they're percentages. So. Yeah. I think I think these are uh, poorly yeah. very, very they, they just are. Yeah. Any, anybody. So I, I, I'll, I'll differentiate between the questions, which when I look at the raw results, I understand we went through this la the last time, we went through this whole thing at the January meeting, you know, because they were looking at some positive answers as being negative because they weren't high enough. Right. And um, the, I find a tremendous, it, it tremendously helpful to look at the raw data. I find it not very helpful to look at their summary data. So I'd like to, I'd, I, I would like to, to see the results and have that posted so that we can look at it. Yeah, me too. I think that there's some problems with the questions and some problems with that, but I don't think that we should let that sort of 
cloud the general trend that we're seeing here, and that is morale is still not high. Mm -hmm. So no matter how we interpret this data and what the numbers mean and percentages and green arrows and red arrows, we still have a morale problem. Um, okay, I don't disagree with that, but how are you, how are you getting that from the numbers? Well, the morale is high well. among AMSA faculty and staff. How much do you agree with this statement? 14% responded favorably. No matter how we interpret that, that ain't good. I the overall numbers. 14% are in the top two boxes. The, the top two boxes. Yeah. And we went, that's what I said. It's the top two boxes. They, they do not interpret the third box as being positive when, in fact, that third it's box. It's neutral, actually. It's neutral. Well, yes. sometimes it ha has been neutral, sometimes it yeah. hasn't been. So, so, so I'm, I'm not here to justify Panorama's uh, methodology. However, it is typical in surveys and Likert scales to view the top two, uh, the top two box, terminology, top two box as the favorable. Yeah, that's, I, that's, that's typical practice for Likert scales. I had actually asked them about that back in uh, January because this came up when we were having a meeting. And uh, I pointed out that, you know, it could be possible to interpret the third one as positive. But they said they want to err on the side of being absolutely certain. So they go with the top two rather than the three. Because I, I brought that up when, after we had that discussion. So, so the, the problem here is, is the top two boxes, it's 14%. Okay. Now look, I'm not trying to argue that morale is high. Okay, let's get that straight. Here, okay, I'm not trying to argue that at all. What I'm saying is, is when you take only the top two boxes, what you're saying is only 14% of the teachers put the school in the top two boxes. Okay, that's not very good. True enough. Okay. I'd also point out though that the, it's scaled up. Okay, since the last one. So how you know what is the scaling? And when I look when this is the same problem that we had in January when I looked at the way the numbers trended. My interpretation of the data was more positive. Not that we didn't have problems that needed addressed, but it was more positive than what the summary report gives. And, yeah, and so, that's. Yeah, and, and no question about it. I completely agree. You need to look at the detailed report. I think that's now available as of yeah. today. It'll be posted. I think the. Um, just. And I would just say, I think this kind of like a repeat of last month. Mm -hmm. We got the summary results first, then you can drill down on the details. I think you got the detailed links for the family survey, which we reviewed in summary last month. So you can drill down and, and look at the actual lower level data to get a better sense. But I think to just point, fundamentally, I mean, we, we have an issue. Um, and if you look at it, let me just ask quick, yeah. if, I, if I interpret that correctly, then I would say that Back in June, we were at 8%, now we're at 14 So if you just looked at the numbers, it's like a 75% improvement. It's <laughs> yeah. extremely low, and no one's happy with that. So, it, uh, so just that. I took it. Things are bad. They're getting a little better very slow. They're, they're slightly less bad. They're slightly less <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I mean, I think it's bad, right? But um, a... Another way I think maybe Ken's what you're going for is it'll be important. We need to understand why this is only at 14%, right? But if we looked at last spring's survey and we saw what percentage of the population were in the bottom two boxes and haven't seen a migration to the middle, mm -hmm. that could be an indication that something's working. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I, you know, there's exactly so much right. work.